doesn't get you excited, then nothing will. Welcome to another episode of Fine and Joe. I hope you're keeping safe no matter where you are in the world. And if this is your first time, then welcome. We're an offshore fishing channel exploring the Victorian coast, mixing our passion with fishing and filmmaking. So if you'd like to be part of the crew, then hit that subscribe button and bell notification for every new release. So I've been getting a lot of questions via our Instagram and Facebook pages. If you're not on it, get on it. Uh, questions like, what tackle are you using? What bait? What locations are you looking for? What are you looking for when you're actually going out there? How do you find the reefs? All these sort of different questions. So I've got the captain with me right now. I'm just going to take this camera off here. <laughs> look, going around in circles. Oh, look, I'm dizzy. I'm dizzy. Stop it. So obviously it depends on depends on where you're going, depending on weather you're actually going to have. So normally we work out what the weather is going to be for that particular day that we are going fishing, whether it's going to be a northerly or it's going to be southerly, depending on when you fish offshore or inshore. And then we'll decide whether we're going to fish down low, like San Remo area, or up north, sort of towards Barwon Head. So. Just for argument's sake, we're going to fish out of Port Phillip Bay. So my eye instantly catches this little kickback here. This is what I go, ooh, that's an interesting little contour, a little kickback. All these here. Yeah. I'm like, oh, okay, that's something you might want to just cruise over and throw your sounder over and see. What I typically like to do is we like to fish in, what, anywhere from 25 to 40 metres of water. So I look along that contour mm -hmm. lines. Sort of good idea is to go on the Navionics website and actually have a look at all these contour lines on your computer. And then once you've done that, you can actually then transfer them onto your GPS or your sounder. Yeah, and, use the, um, use and so you're not wasting time while you're sitting in a boat trying to look for, yeah. for ground. You know, we normally sort of work that out prior to actually going out. And then we'll look at the ground and we'll, like, we'll stew over it, we'll ring each other, we'll talk about it, we'll, we'll sit down at lunch time at work. And yeah. say, oh, this looks like a great spot. How about we try this? So we'll log that on the um, the app and then transfer it over to here and then head straight out there. So so we're looking for super highways and reef, aren't we? Like high yeah, peaks. That's right. So we've got we've got 30 metres here. And it's going to have a nice yeah. drop off. Right. To so 44. That's, that's a good spot. And then you can see they're pretty close together, all these lines. So within a matter, that's probably like I could measure that. Yeah, um, so like Cody Banks for argument's sake. Yeah, if you were to go to Cody Bank, that has a, a, a pretty steep drop away. Huge drop off, doesn't it? Massive drop off, massive drop off. This is straight out from uh, Port Phillip Heads, pretty much straight out, um, before the foul grounds. That would be a spot that I'd be like, yep, ripper. We've even got a couple of marks on here. Like, close to. Close to. See, that's something I'd be wanting to try here. Look at that. Yeah. That's like a highway there with reef. So that's real steep, like, like Lawrence pointed out. You can see the real contour lines are real close together. Um, that's 18 metres here. Mm -hmm. on this, uh, that'll be the uh, a high point of a, a 18 metres, yep. yep. And then it comes straight out, and within from there to there is only going to be 20 metres. And it goes from 18 at the high point, the highest point of the low spot, to 30 metres. Yeah. So that's a, that's a 10 metre deviation within a few metres. So that's a nice steep drop, like runaway. So then in my head, I'm thinking to myself, hmm, that'd be like a little highway for. For the gummies and whatnot. For the gummies. Through. Yeah, because gummies, they're lazy. They like to use the tide. They like to use the current to travel through. So if you find a point like that and you think to yourself, oh, they'd be able to use that to swing around and go into the heads, it's worth giving a crack. So once you've found your spot like that, mm -hmm. what baits are you using? How are you setting up your rods? All that all sort right. of stuff. So I'm going to think to myself, right, what am I fishing for tomorrow? Right, well, obviously go gummies. gummies. Right, gummies. So this is the, the heads, the, the rip, which we've done a previous video on. So this is the rip here. Anywhere through this area here, if you drop down... Um, and even back inside in, towards Portsea. Yeah, exactly right. Well, not Portsea, sorry, Port Lonsdale. Anywhere fast current water that has um, a lot of reef, 17 metre reef, whatever. This is just inside the heads. It's still inside Port Phillip Bay. Yeah, so back so even... Zoom out. So even along here, I think we've caught some wrasse, Correct. haven't we? You can, you can catch plenty of wrasse and all those sort of little reef fish and whatnot. Those, um, the little perch and that yep. we've caught before. They're ideal bait. Ideal bait for your gummies. And I think um, just outside the heads here is where we caught a lot of slimies and... Um, oh, exactly right. Yeah, the, on one of the episodes you'll see that Anth and myself were sitting in the boat and we were catching... Oh, the tuna episode. Yeah, we would have been catching them so, like, pretty much at the end of here. I think this might even be the spot. That spot there? Yep which people at home can probably even see the GPS marks. 
where that's located. Where that. So that's right at the end of that of that channel area. So that's where we were catching a heap of slimies and uh, and we did that at night time using lights. They yeah, seem to be attracted the by lights, the light, don't they? Uh, yeah, and a little bit of um, a little bit of burly in the water, and they just go nuts. You've got literally thousands, thousands of slimies and um, yakas around the boat. And then we're heading straight out to our spot after and we filled up our there, tank. From there, it's it's probably only like five, ten k's to a spot. Not even like you can find closer contours. It's anywhere. Like look at it. Like yeah, like where Anthony pointed out before. Here's that really nice looking piece of contour and depth you could sit through here yep you could sit just off the edge if you wanted to try that because they're going to be swimming through on the easy water yep and when do you want to be sitting there ah uh, so tides tides are critical we like to fish basically roughly an hour or so after slack water in the um, bass strait so as the tide is at the fastest flowing that's when you're going to get most of your bites flow equals bites so just for the tide times, you'll have to go on to the BOM website, which I'll leave in, which I'll leave, which I'll leave in the description below. So obviously the tide times will vary depending on where you are and where you're going to be fishing. So, so what I've got here is I've got the uh, tide times for the rip, and on Willy Weather here, I've got Point Lonsdale tide times as well. So you can see on the graph here we've got the highs and lows. So that's your um, high and low tides for Point Lonsdale, not to be confused with the rip tide time. So basically how it happens is that the Bass Strait and Port Phillip Bay, when they reach the same height, it equals slack tide. So, so if you look on the chart here, basically in the middle, the middle of that chart here, you'll have the high and low. So in the middle of that will be slack water, roughly about that line there. So when you want to fish, you want to fish on the longest tide. So as we go on further along the days here, so we've got Monday and as we head to uh, Friday here, you can see, as you can see here, we've got the, uh, the longest tide. Now that's when you want to be fishing for gummies, on the longest tide, so you get the longest time fishing and it'll also be the fastest tide running as well. So, so hopefully that makes sense. Back to the cap. So the water's That's going to be flowing point. in from, the, say, for example, if it's going incoming tide, it's going to be flowing in from the right-hand side of our sander and cruising in. So you're going to get a lot of fast water action here. Yeah. So that will be like a possible spot I'd like to sit down and just chill for a while and have a look. So we like to get out there an hour or so early. So basically on slack water, we set up, we put our baits down, we do our spread, a couple of paternosters, a couple of just bottom bashes, and then we set ourselves. So we know within an hour or two, we should be starting to get bites. And how long are we sitting out there? We're sitting there all day. We never leave the spot, pretty much. We don't, do we? No, fish two tides out there, yeah. okay? So the flood tide, ebb tide. So yeah. whatever I catch typically on a reef, so even though I've got fresh bait previously, if I catch something just now, like hook up, bring up a small yep. perch or something like that, I'll cut it, I'll fillet it, or chunk bait it, and I'll send that straight back down. And I've had great success on that. So if I put down something that they know that's already in that area, you're giving yourself every chance, I reckon. I just get worked up. I can't leave a spot. <laughs> Even looking. So this is... What gear are you using? Yeah, going over squares. Let's go and have a look. This is the ideal size. So this rod is... Let's get some info here first. All right. So it's... So, Shimano Therese. Yeah. 15 to 30 pound. So this is the ideal size, I, I think. Um, it's not too heavy. Too. You still get the You still get the, the fight you want. It's got plenty of bounce, recurve in the tip rod, um, matched up with the Ceragosa 10,000. Yep. Perfect, ideal setup. Uh, this is what Loz Dog loves. Yeah, well, see, my, uh, my theory behind all that is that uh, if I'm out there and I'm trying for gummies, there's going to be a lot of other fish out there as well. So that rod is an all-rounder. So it's the all-rounder. It's going to catch rays. It's going to catch sharks. It's going to bronze. It's going to catch... Uh, school sharks it's going to catch gummies as well uh, it's still light enough to have a good fight. and light it'll catch a snapper on there no problem either kingfish yeah. i've caught tuna on that it's not so it's basically good an all-round good all-round offshore fishing rod Insur yeah. inshore as well i mean you'll catch a nice snapper say a little one kilo two kilo snapper on that no oh, problems sure. like i say the the tip is sensitive enough 
like it's really good. You can still get yourself a good experience, a good bite. It's not too heavy like the second rod we've got here. I wouldn't advise That's a big boy. Catch with platies and... Nah, <laughs> nah, nah, they're surely not. But platies and uh, squids. Yeah, no but... Ideal. Even though I have caught a squid on it. Yeah. Though. Here's one of our mini rigs we set up. Sinker, drop a loop. Oh, so, sinker on the bottom? Yep, so sinker on the bottom. Actually, I don't know. Oh, I wouldn't want to lie to the people in And it hasn't got any info. Yeah, probably 12 10, minutes. 12, somewhere in there. So that's a T knot. Yes. And that's a double overhanded yep. knot. Drop a loop. Drop Ready. a loop. All right. So that's a basic paternoster setup with a Lumo tube over the top. This one is a circle hook, but offset. We typically actually like to run them in line. That way you get a better uh, jaw hook up rate. Yep. You don't get a gut bite. Yep. When they hook the gut, they can actually bite then your leader. Later off, and it comes out. Yeah, now that lumo it just sort of helps illuminate it a yeah, little bit. Hundred percent, attract the fish from about sort of twenty yeah. meters onwards, sort of thing. So by doing a double overhand knot, you can actually, if you don't want to do the the poke the line through the. Um, bear with me for a sec. Okay, so you've tied this through. All right, that's a tied through. A lot of the time, we take that loop, we feed it through the eyelet, and we over over the top. If you don't want to do that. With a T-knot and a double overhander, you can actually cut one side and do your traditional uni-knot, whatever you feel like. Mm -hmm. So, just a variation. And that's our basic setup. Yeah, and we've got ourselves probably, what, a good 1.2 to 1.5 metres, probably 1.5 metres off the bottom. Just so to get this, it across the reef. Yeah, and this is going to sit, your bait's going to sit and present over the top of the kelp. Yep. And all your sort of, you know, brackish crap down the bottom yep so then the fish can actually see your bait sitting up nice and high off the bottom yep i prefer a swivel because in my head i'm like ah uh, it can get turned it can twist it can whatever um and then when you get a twist in your mono once it gets pressure on it it actually increases the breaking strain on that spot for this big girl here we actually left from sorrento boat ramp and we traveled all the way up near Mud Island and as you can see here on your Navionics you can see here the contour line just on the edge of Mud Island and we sat in here so it's roughly roughly 12 meters of water and uh, we went and got fresh wrasse from around here around the section here close to the rip another back of Point Nepean here and then we traveled back up and then we sat here we anchored up all day and I think um, we got her at about two o'clock in the afternoon. Now we caught that on a Western Port rig or a running sinker rig on an 8 ho inline hook uh, using the RAS. Now we anchored uh, with no burley. No much point in using any burley in that section of the channel there because the water just runs too fast. Now one of our favourite spots offshore is actually through Western Port here, so we normally leave, which is a fair distance, about 40-45k, something like that, from uh, Stony Point boat ramp, which is around here somewhere, um, through the Western Port Channel, or the Western Channel here, out through the head, so we've got Flinders here, uh, if you stop off Around here you can actually get some great, great bait here with yakas and slimies. We normally catch those in the morning, about here near the, near the uh, yellow, yellow marker here. Uh, and from there, you don't want to travel too close to Flinders, but we travel straight out and around to a place called Cape Shank, which is right here. Now out from Cape Shank, we can see, uh, Cape Shank is the spot here where it's about 24 metres and we can see huge drop off either side of there. So that's a spot that we've sat a few times. In fact, that's a spot I think from one of our videos where I called This Is It. This is all, this is a spot. And the same sort of process happened here. I and mean, we're using Paternoster rigs here. Uh, so we burly offshore because you never know what's going to be lurking around in the waters. And that's where we caught most of our big monster gummies offshore through Western Port. Well, hope you enjoyed that video. And if you did, 
make sure you hit that like button because that helps to get our videos out of the rubbish and into the suggested pile. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, notification bell as well, that'd be great. If you have any more questions, maybe something we didn't actually touch on in this video, make sure you leave that in the comments below as well. Somewhere. I'm around the big blue. The big blue? No, give that a crack. Well, that's it for this video. Hope to see you soon in the big blue.